In this episode, we're going to take a little bit of a different look at Docker, because depending on your situation, it may be difficult or a bit messy to create a new Ruby on Rails application. So a couple examples of that could be, if you're on the new Apple Silicon and you're having trouble getting ASDF, RVM, or something like that installed, but Docker did just recently release a public preview, which allows you to run containers on the Apple M1. Also, if you're on Windows, even with WSL2 installed, you may not want to have to deal with setting up and installing Ruby, just so you can create new projects, even though everything else that you're doing is within Docker. So in this episode, we're basically going to have a look at creating a Docker file and a Docker Compose file, which will allow you to start up a container. And from within that container, you can then create a new Ruby on Rails application, and then it is immediately accessible on your host. We can take it a step further with having a template. So that would be my template.rb, and then that'll read in our source files, which we have another Docker file and a Docker Compose file. And that's going to be for our actual application to get up and running with Docker. So to start out, we could do a Docker compose run, and we want to run our app service, and then we'll just pass in the command bash. This will go through a bunch of different steps to get this container prepared. So we have a Ruby version, and we also have Rails installed. So from here, we could just do a Rails new. I'll just give this an example app. We can then pass in dash elm for template dot rb. And then this will go through. It'll create our Rails application as we normally would. And if I scroll up a bit, you can see where it also copied out from the source folder, our Docker file and the Docker Compose YAML file. And once it goes through and does everything it needs to do to create the new Ruby on Rails application, we can then list out our directories and you see we have our example app. Now I'm going to go ahead and run exit, which is going to close this Docker container. And back on my host machine, we have the example folder. If we navigate into the example folder, we can list out the directory. There we have our Docker file and the Docker compose. We should then be able to just run Docker compose up to launch this application. And once the application launches, you can then just go to your local host port 3000 and you'll see that you're up and running with Rails. So there's going to be a lot of benefits in doing it this way, especially if you have multiple machines, whether one is a Mac, another is Linux or Windows, it's going to allow you to stay pretty consistent between any platform that you use, as well as any computer that you use, since you're basically containing everything within the Docker container. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt? So be sure to check that out and use the promo code Ruby for free shipping within the United States. To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the pro membership.